this video, I want to talk about solutions. Or as a way to introduce the concept of chemical solutions, not like solutions to problems, but chemical solutions. Now, when we talk about a solution, it's like you have a flask, it's filled often with a liquid, all right, and it's got stuff mixed together. So let's talk about a solution because there's parts of a solution. So what is a solution? It's a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Now, there's lots of different kinds of solutions, and we'll get to that in a second, but in a solution, there's two parts. There's the solvent, and there's the solute. Now, the solvent is what something is dissolved into, and the solute is what is dissolved. Now you're probably familiar with this, with like salt water. If I put salt in water, the salt dissolves in the water. Make sense? And so the solute, in that case, would be the salt, or NaCl, right? And then water would be the solvent. Now in, in our class, we will often and almost exclusively talk about how water is uh, almost always the solvent. And, and in fact, let's use another term. When you have water as the solvent, we use a specific term, and that's aqueous, which means dissolved in water. The word aqua comes from the word water. So these are the parts of a solution. The solution, right? The solution contains the solvent and the solute. Now the next term we want to talk about related to solutions, there are some terms called electrolytes and non-electrolytes. You've probably heard of the term electrolytes in relation to like sports drinks and things like that. What's an electrolyte and a non-electrolyte? These are solutions that conduct an electrical current. So if you take like a beaker filled with a solution that's an electrolyte and you put in there like two pieces of wire and a light bulb, you know, and you plug the light bulb in, the light bulb lights up. We'll do this in class. That's pretty awesome. And uh, a non-electrolyte, <laughs> you probably figured this out, they don't conduct an electrical current. Now, how does that work? So as you see this image, we're talking about the light bulb that, uh, that lights up. Notice how the sodium atoms move towards the negative pole, because sodiums, of course, are positives, and the chlorides move to the positive side of the electrical uh, field, and that's why it works. And this leads us to a very important word. This word is going to be kind of a fun new word for you. It's called dissociation. Dissociation means for something to break up. You could actually use this term synonymously when you're like, I'm going to dissociate with, from my boyfriend or my girlfriend. You're going to break up. So let's talk about this. This is very important. Dissociation. So if I take salt, solid salt, right? It's a piece of salt, crystal salt, and I drop it in water, it turns into Na positive AQ plus Cl minus AQ. Because salt, when it dissolves, doesn't stay, the sodium doesn't stay connected to the chloride. It breaks apart, it dissociates into sodiums and chlorides. And that's why salt is an electrolyte. Because it makes sodium and chloride, what does it make? It makes something called an ion. So we've learned about ions, but ions are what conduct an electrical current. So let's kind of tie this back to the electrolyte, non-electrolyte. So that makes this the electrolyte. But what's a non-electrolyte? If you take, for example, sugar, C6H12O6, solid, so one kind of sugar, and you drop that in water, as you probably are well aware, sugar dissolves in water. But when it breaks apart, or when it dissolves, I should say, it doesn't break apart. It's C6H12O6AQ. Notice there's no charged particles or species, so there are no ions. So we call this a non-electrolyte. So non-electrolytes, because they don't dissociate, do not like light the light bulb up. 
And there's actually a third category, one we call a weak electrolyte. Now, this is an interesting one. We can take vinegar. Now, vinegar is acetic acid. It's H-C-2-H-3-O-2. And if we take uh, vinegar, which is, which is a, a liquid, as it turns out, actually, and I drop that into water, when it breaks apart, it actually has a double arrow and breaks apart to hydrogens and acetates. Now, what's going on with that? This is an interesting thing. Is What's up with a double arrow? That means that only some of them break apart. So, so for, for example, let's say I had 100 of these. It turns out it's about 5 of them, so about 5% of it breaks apart. So you'd make five of these and five of these, and of course this would come down to 95. Because there's some ions and a few ions, this is called a weak electrolyte. Because only it only makes a few ions. So if we put the light bulb in the in the solution, a weak electrolyte solution of, of vinegar, the light bulb will sort of just, it'll turn on, but it'll be a weak, it won't like it'll be super bright, it'll be kind of just a little bit bright. So as I was just saying, now look at this cool image. The first one is not C6H12O6, the non-electrolyte is this, a different chemical, but you can see it, that's the non-electrolyte. Notice when it breaks up, it breaks up into just, let's say it doesn't break up. It does not dissociate. And of course the salt completely dissociates, and then the, uh, the vinegar partially dissociates, and that's what causes something to be a strong, a weak, and a non-electrolyte. Now, one last thing. Why does that happen? It happens because salt has weak bonds, so it breaks up easy. See, water can strip it apart. Sugar has strong bonds, so it doesn't break apart. So water can't rip it apart, so it doesn't dissociate. And acetic acid, only some of them can break apart because the bonds are weak-ish strong, they're in the between, right? They're in between, so weak electrolytes have sort of medium bonds, non-electrolytes have strong bonds, and these have weak bonds. One more image that just to really illustrate that, see how the salts are breaking apart in this diagram, and how the, uh, the, uh, and the sugar, it's not, and they're all clumped together, but they don't make ions. Electrolytes make ions. All right, let's just do a, a few more terms. Solutions have some important terms, so let's talk about the next one. Another, next one is miscible. When something is miscible, you know what that means? It means it, dis it dissolves. So if you have something that's miscible, it dissolves, and it's something that dissolves in something else. Another one is hygroscopic. These are salts that remove, that remove water from the air. So I have some salts and then it just removes water from there. They, they like water so much that they'll actually dissolve, which leaves us to a very cool word. I think this is one, deliquescence. And these ones are so hygroscopic. So these are so hygroscopic that when they become wet, this is crazy, that they actually Become, or when they when they, uh, they they become wet when you expose them to air. So if you take these chemicals out of a jar and you leave them outside, they just get moist. They they suck the water out of the air. So they're called deliquescent substances. A classic example of this is sodium hydroxide. Now you've worked with sodium hydroxide and other things in this class, and sodium hydroxide is a very deliquescent stuff. If you put it on a scale. The it's like a little uh, pellets, and it'll just get heavier and heavier and heavier because it's pulling water out of the air. And, you know, I forgot to say, miscible means they dissolve in something else. There's a, co a corollary, and that's immiscible. And that means they don't dissolve in each other. So that's a quick, brief introduction to solutions. A lot of terms in this video. We're going to use other things as we learn further about this, and we're going to use these to do cool experiments. We'll see you in class.